In today's episode of Things You Certainly Won't Hear, fake leaders like Mary B.S. Barr of Government Motors saying about Elon Musk, some great clips posted on X. To all the naysayers of Elon Musk out there, here is a video of some of the most important figures in the car industry talking about Elon Musk and his impact on the industry. So let's watch these clips you guys can see on screen now, who's speaking and when. Please don't show these to the big guy who claims that GM led and matter. Um, Elon Musk. What are your thoughts on the man? Is he a good or a bad thing for the car industry? Well, I would say rather maybe, is he good or bad for the planet, perhaps? There we I mean, go. he's uh, otherworldly in many ways, I would say. I mean, what, what that. By the way, what a great opening statement. Immediately expanding the scale of Musk's impact. Not just is he good for the car industry, spoiler alert, yes, but has this guy made a massive positive impact on a planetary scale? And the answer, of course, is yes. Immediate respect and credit out of the gates. That man has managed to achieve is, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you made it up as a story, no one would believe it, I would say. That's number one, right? Uh, I, I remember kind of him getting on my radar when he sold PayPal and he said, I'm going to build rockets. Uh, hmm, kind of, I, can, I can relate to that. <laughs> some. Funnily enough, this is how Musk got on my radar as well. I heard about some guy who'd made some money on the internet and started a rocket company. I'm a massive space nerd. Shout out to my father for instilling that in me from an early age. This is actually one of the foundational reasons I ultimately ended up investing in Tesla because I'd been following everything this crazy fucker had been doing since early SpaceX days solely because of my passion for space and my hope that humanity would eventually be among the stars. I mean, among other stars. So every time there was an interview, anything at all about this guy I was reading about online for years, eventually he gets involved in Tesla. That's how I began to pay attention to the company from the early roads to days. Not because I'm excited about electric vehicles or give a shit about any of that. No, I was a massive space nerd. I'm like, this motherfucker's an absolute legend. He's risking his own worth trying to get us back to space. What a legend. Wait, what? He's involved in an electric vehicle company? Okay, I'll pay attention to that as well. After doing so for many years, I realized there was definitely something in Tesla. It's been quite interesting, by the way, to see Musk go from a name that zero people mentioned up until about maybe six or so years ago to suddenly the most talked about man probably on the planet. <laughs> it's just, maybe that's, I mean, if I wouldn't build cars, rocket seems like an interesting thing. It's a, something I cannot do from, from my potato field in Engelholm with no resources. But if I had sold PayPal, maybe that would be a cool thing to do. So that was interesting. And then a few years later, I'm going to build cars. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. So yeah, I followed him a bit, of course. Uh, and uh, I mean, if anyone proves you can do anything and multiply it kind of next to each other simultaneously it's it's elon right and uh of course he's a character uh he's a human being um i mean what he did to the car industry he just shook it up completely um uh, he also started i mean he started so very true there musk did shake up the car industry and it's important to understand because this directly ties back to tesla's mission statement unlike most mission statements which are a bunch of corporate wankery and bullshit that nobody cares about, nobody believes in. It's just an absolute fucking wank. Tesla's mission is actually their guiding principle, their actual North Star. They actually mean what they say. They're actually aligned directly with their mission. When the company started out, their goal in their own stated mission was to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, to force the automotive industry to move to electric or go bankrupt. How? By making such incredible, compelling products, demonstrating what electric vehicles could do, that it would become a no-brainer for consumers to buy an electric vehicle because otherwise the innovation was not going to happen. I mean, if there's no Tesla, let's be honest here, it could have been decades, half a century or more before anyone even attempted to scale electric vehicles. I mean, if there was no Tesla, just think about this. What company would have had the fucking balls and the ability to execute to actually do what Tesla's done? And how long would it have taken for a company? Remember, the driving force, no pun intended, for battery cost declines has been electric vehicles. There'd been some cost decline as they scaled up in electronic devices, laptops, cell phones, etc. But it was marginal relative to the impact that electric vehicles have had just because of the sheer volume of batteries that go in EVs. It was a huge risk to attempt this project. If Tesla hadn't, who would have done? How long would it have taken? And this goes back to the mission and the impact that Tesla and Musk have had on the automotive industry. Another example of why it's really worth paying attention to what Tesla say they're going to do, because unlike most companies, they actually mean what they say they're going to do. Except uh, robo-taxis, which obviously, they're just joking about that. That's not a big deal. You should ignore that. Let's move on. Oh, and uh, what humanoid robot? It's obviously just a stock pump. <laughs> Started a little bit later than I did. 
Actually, 2007 or 2000, 2008, Koenigsegg was a bigger company than Tesla, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. kind of, what did we do since then, <laughs> comparatively? Um, but, but he started out when you were not allowed to start in the car industry. It was not an allowing industry. It's not that it's super allowing now, but now it's kind of a thing to see startups. Uh, when I started in 1994, people were laughing in my face and said the supercar is dead and this and that. But of course, he did that on a completely different level against the whole automotive industry with an electric car that no one asked for. And as I said to uh, maybe during this talk or before that, uh, I mean, a few years ago, people said there is no electric car. It's never going to happen. Now it's the only thing. And, and with By the way, that's also true. It was only a few years ago, probably around the time that Tesla demonstrated profitability at scale, that a meaningful number of at least percentage of people started to realize, oh, wait, these are viable. Wait, hang on. They're not only viable, but they're becoming better and cheaper over time. Holy shit. If that keeps going on, they're going to be much better and much cheaper in the future. Holy shit. They're the future. It's easy to forget how quickly sentiment has shifted on electric vehicles. Just a couple of years ago in the finance media, the majority of people still doubting if consumers wanted electric vehicles, doubting if they'd be the primary form of propulsion in the future, thinking they're a niche product, how times change. Out Elon and Tesla, that would never happen. I think that's a good thing for the planet and for us and not only for the automotive. And it might be cool that we one day can go to Mars as well, I guess. No, he is. I've, I've met him a couple of times and we, we actually, one of the meetings was about potentially working together. And now, clip number two. Gord Murray, the CEO of Gord Murray Automotive. He is an incredibly driven, he's probably the most driven guy I think I've ever met. And that says something because I'm a bit single-minded at times. Oh, well, he had um, a F1, right? Yeah, he F1. Yes, he did. Yeah. He had an right. F1. That's, yeah. that's right, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely agree. You know, the, the, the clever thing for me, or the brave thing rather than clever for me, was there weren't startups in those days in, in high volume car manufacturing. And then to be a startup in a br with a brand new powertrain, I mean, you know. Um, no infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. So you, what, whatever you think of what he's doing, you have to admire the man. Yeah. Unless you hate yourself and still live in your mother's basement, in which case you may, in fact, not admire the guy, but hate the guy. Because you see in him what's absent in you, which would include not only a big brain, but also big balls, the courage to actually take risks. I'm not sure how much of the risk taking is genetic nature versus nurture, seeing examples, but Musk's family history, going back to his grandparents, seems to be a long line of risk takers in the Musk lineage. But you've got to give the guy credit, not only for being willing to take the risks, but to be able to execute. The stuff this guy's done is just fucking mind blowing, unquestionably. It's always a massive red flag when you hear anybody claiming the Musk's overrated, his accomplishments don't matter, these kind of things. He's a fake engineer, people who are not to be taken seriously. Matty. Yeah, I also met Elon uh, a couple of times, and I guess that, you know, probably we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, because he proved the model of um, startups in the auto industry. Well, I started a company before he was, uh, he took over Tesla. So I still remember Martin Eberhardt and all that. I was following it from, from day one and when Tesla stocks were like, you know, $20 flat for a very long time. And it, he I also happen to remember Tesla stock around $20 going nowhere for half a decade. It was a great opportunity that I took full advantage of. He gets lots of heat and criticism, uh, especially from like, you know, also sometimes very silly things that he's just an investor, he's, you know, that other people are doing all the work and so on. But I know how car companies work, also big ones, as we are working with many of them, uh, behind the scenes. And, you know, the one thing that's different in Tesla than everybody else is Elon. Just Elon and the, what he is doing and how he's running the business and the bold visions and also then execution. You know, I went into a lot of detail with him. He understands. Uh, you know, what's unique about Elon, he has this big global picture, you know, humanity, planetary level picture, you know, making uh, life multiplanetary, but can also drill very much into the details like very few other people. And knowing what's going on behind the scenes of the auto industry. Bro, so I was listening, but I, I just noticed some movement on the reflection here on the, it, there's no, surely there isn't a person in this suit, right? But I actually noticed some movement there. It must have been a reflection in the background, right? Am I tripping balls here? I'm going to do a quick rewind and see if there's much movement. It, it, someone's in the fucking suit. Shit, dude. I can't believe it took me this long to realize. I don't really know the full context here, but anyway, uh, back to the comments. What's going on behind the scenes of the auto industry? I, I, I would, you know, bet everything I have that it wouldn't be happening right now if it wasn't for Elon and for Tesla. So obviously what he's really trying to say here is that 
Mary from GM Lead and Matters. She electrified the whole industry, right? Uh, what everybody's doing now is a pure consequence of Tesla, nothing else. So this is full electrification. And in the last few years, it has really changed, you know. In and now from the CEO of Remac to John Hennessy of Hennessy Performance Engineering. And really changed the industry completely. The more he fails, the more he succeeds. Yeah, you know? exactly. I, lo I love his courage. And I'm proud that he's a fellow Texan now. I was going to say. He just lives up the road in Austin. Yeah. Met him at Geneva many years ago. Asked him a question. And, and he gave me an answer that was way over my head. Um, but again, you know, what, I mean, to, just like what all you guys said, I mean, you know, would, would the OEMs and the governments in the world now be saying we're going, you know, full EV or whatever if it wasn't for this guy getting the ball rolling and having kind of that inflection point, you know? And I think, again, we could go back and forth as far as the virtues of electrification, but one of the things I think is most interesting is just the, the, the from a design standpoint, you have this whole new architecture where you don't have this lump of engine and drive line in the middle of the car that all of a sudden you can do some really cool things. So again, whether it's Tesla, SpaceX, now Twitter, um, you know, I love that he's a free speech, libertarian kind of guy. Makes two of us, my friend. Um, again, you know, he's human and, uh, you know, he fails like we all fail. And when he fails, it's pretty, you know, it's obviously it's in the, in the public eye, but just think of just the value of the, the the, the jobs that he's created, the technology that he's created, the, the, all the other OEMs playing, trying to play catch up with them. And again, I'm joking, I've got a Tesla Plaid and it's got crappy panel gaps. <laughs> but, but the technology really works and it's fast. And uh, the True, the technology is great. Did you note, by the way, he said that the other automotive manufacturers are, quote, keyword here, trying to catch up. So spoiler alert, by the way, they are trying in vain. The charging network really work, works well. So I, I just, as an entrepreneur, I, I have huge admiration for the, like, this guy is like, he's the king of the double down. Like, you know, you have to like, literally like, bury the guy in a, in a, in a hole or something to like, <laughs> stop him from what, doing whatever he's trying to do. Bro, what absolute classic quotes. The king of the double down. And rightly pointing out that you'd have to literally kill the guy to stop him continuing to do what matters to him. And in unrelated matters, I'm sure all the mostly men suffering from soy poisoning, demanding that Elon shut the fuck up and stop having opinions, have not yet figured this out. Elon's going to Elon. If it matters to him, nothing you say or do is going to stop him. But please, cry harder. You don't know, he, you don't know how he's going to get there. He, he may not know how he's going to get there, but... And he you know, people criticizing him and also like accusing him now to do whatever, Twitter, just to make money and so on. Like, he's so much beyond that point that people don't realize like he's worth billions and billions, like hundreds of billions. And people look from their perspective and, you know, 99% of the people would long, long, long time ago, you know, throw in the towel, I made it, you know, enjoy their life. He is crushing himself to get to move forward on all these fronts and exposing himself to hatred of so many people and to more facts another reason to respect the guy unless you don't respect yourself because you lack the courage that musk does in which case please elon shut the fuck up stop having opinions stop being courageous it's making me look bad musk actually saw these clips and responded they say a lot of nice things but i would like to correct musk here they say a lot of accurate things it's good to see musk getting the credit he deserves for his execution, his courage, his focus, his ability to execute, the positive impact Tesla has had not only on the automotive industry, but at a planetary scale and will have in the future. And just a closing thought, I seem to have noticed a bit of a pattern, a trend. In general, the more of a positive impact someone like Musk seems to have, the more passionate, obsessed, intense haters, aka confused admirers, they also seem to attract. It makes you wonder why. I'm just kidding, I know the answer. All the hate is coming from below. People only ever hate up. And without exception, Musk's haters fit one or more of the following descriptions. One, an NPC with a tiny brain in which beliefs are installed by others as opposed to their own thinking, investigation, and drawing their own conclusions. NPCs who just gobble up whatever they hear in the fake news or from NPCs in the social circle. Two, vapid virtue signaling drones who also happen to be NPCs who desperately need the approval of others and in whatever social circle they find themselves in, they believe that Elon bad will gain them approval. And or three, people who just hate themselves so much, they see Musk and they think, this guy's making me look like a joke. I am a joke, but it's kind of awkward that he's reflecting my lack of accomplishments, character, ability back on myself. And rather than taking this as incentive and motivation to get better, to challenge myself to learn and grow, 
It's just easier for me to just hate on the guy. So Elon's a scammer. He's a fraud. He's a fake engineer. Tesla shit. Fuck you. He bought Twitter just to get rich. What a loser. And he's ugly too. Fuck you, Elon. Except, of course, by the way, the, the people who manage money for others who believe that they do a better job of running Tesla than Elon because they're obviously right. And in those particular cases, because they're exceptions to the rule, t- Elon should just take note of everything they have to say because obviously they know better, as evidenced by their track record of doing things that Musk has never... Oh, wait. Uh, awkward. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. Ate like trash. Rarely exercised. Used alcohol as a stress crutch. Cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass. Got me back to the gym. Motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. and something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy... Everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and, of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy. You'll need to use it. You'll find ways to use it. Day nine, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you manage to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro. When I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. 
Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.